As in all strokes, the body position in backstroke is an absolute crucial consideration when performing the stroke correctly. The body position that I like is, I guess, best described as a standing tall position. As if you're standing against the wall, with your butt and your shoulders square against the wall, your head pulled in so that basically if you put something down through the top of your head, it would come out in another area. Now you can actually swim backstroke in it with a good body position with a high head or a low head position depending on if you're going to swim with your head in a higher position you need to make sure that the chin is pulled back in to give you that spine alignment through your head down through the lower regions. This will ensure also that your hip position within the stroke stays very close to the surface of the water allowing you to rotate your hip and shoulder at the same time. So you're trying to rotate both your hip and your shoulder at the same time. This will vary a little bit from swimmer to swimmer depending on their ability. Chest position again, with, if you get your hip position and your head position right, your chest position is going to look after itself basically. If you can imagine the T between your shoulder blades coming through the, the back of C7 I think it is there and keeping your chin back and pressing down on the water that will give you a really nice position in the water and continue that hip and shoulder rotation. With the arm extension or your arm recovers out of the water a crucial part of that is you must relax at the completion of your underwater stroke you must release right at the end of your stroke on the push off and give yourself a nice relaxed wrist as you start your recovery, so your elbow is locked out but your wrist is nice and relaxed. It's allowing you to give you a nice shoulder rotation out of the water with a relaxed arm and for a nice knife edge clean entry if possible. Now it's something that I haven't quite got with any of my squad yet but perfectly but I'm still aiming that way. So the cleaner you can be on the entry and the more relaxed you can be on the recovery allows you to get a great catch off the rotation of your shoulders into the water. Once you're catching, you've gone into the water and you've got into the catch position, and you get nice and deep, all right, slightly out as you're descending down, just slightly out as you're going, and then your catch is in an up sweep direction. So you're sweeping up, trying to get to the peak of your up sweep before or just on where your hand is in line with your shoulders. At the maximum up sweep of the hand, then it's important that you've, the, the next phase of the pull becomes an over with your fingertips pointed at the side of the pool, the over and down push off, again getting towards that relaxation at the end of the push off. The key part of this, the development of the stroke in this way is to make sure that your body with your hips and shoulders are rotating at the correct time throughout the stroke cycle. Very important to have a very relaxed straight arm recovery. Try to maintain that relaxation as setting up for the entry. Again, trying to get that really knife edge clean entry if possible. Shoulder rotates out of the water before the hand exits the water. And the hip and shoulder, again, I keep going over this to make sure the hip and shoulder rotation keeps going at the same time. The second half of the recovery is more about keeping that relaxation and positioning the arm for the extension of the hand and wrist to enter the water cleanly. Now we're looking side on underwater now and um, as the hand enters the water, you're trying to get in deep carrying the least amount of air down as possible. Spread fingers on the hands, an open thumb can inhibit the cleanness of the entry and thus inhibit the strength of the catch. Once we get down into that nice position, extended down through the arm, nice and deep, we're sweeping down slightly out as we're catching the water on the way down and then as we catch and set our elbow into the pull phase and the up sweep, so this at this stage is a up sweep. I'd like to prefer to it as not anything else except an up sweep. Getting to a point where you're looking to set up a really nice L shape 
with the shoulders in line with the elbow, then a nice right angle, no, it's definitely not inside the right angle. Some swimmers are a little bit outside the 90 degrees, but looking for a 90 degree angle from the elbow to the wrist. And as we can come up through that upsweep, getting to the top of that upsweep, the wrist is gently breaking out so that the fingers are pointed towards the side of the pool. So we have another angle from the wrist on the inside of the wrist to before we set up for the push phase of the stroke. It's very important that the body is keeping up with the arm or not one getting in front of the other. You have to time these things at the same time. The hip and shoulder rotation are to be in sync throughout the pull phase. The second half of the pull has to be done with an elbow and wrist sweep and rotation. So you're rotating and pushing down with your fingers still out, pointed out to the side of the pool and create very sore wrists and forearms doing this properly. And then at the end of that push phase, you must relax to get the release that's required. When you do relax at the right point in time, and if you continue to rotating correctly, you'll get a really nice inward skull that a few people for a period of time tried to teach. But the best way to teach it is to get them to relax at the end of the push phase. So at the end of the push phase, relax, rotate and lift your arm with the thumb side of the wrist being the first to exit the water. Not the thumb, the thumb side of the wrist being the first to exit the water after the shoulder. Backstroke is very, very strenuous and if you're going to be very good at backstroke, you need to be very good at kicking. Now kicking is something that's quite individual. Some people are fast at kicking, some people aren't quite as fast, but you must be fit at kicking. So kicking is an enormous part of any backstroke program. The six beat constant kick action. You've got to try to keep as small amplitude as possible. You need to try to keep your kick inside your body line, which may sound easy, but it's quite difficult, particularly when you're turning and rotating your whole body and you need to try to keep your kick all in one line. You'll usually find the swimmers have a little bit wider kick on the crossover to each side. There'll be one kick there to each side that's a little bit wider than the other. I myself would prefer that they could keep that all in the one continuous amplitude. It's a six beat kick action. You must have good flexion extension of the knees, ankles and feet. Your hips must remain close to the surface. There's a lots of things, exercises that you can do to improve or maintain your ankle flexibility. For example, you can just sit on your feet for a while. That helps quite a lot. Note synchronization on the underwater, the catch of one hand and release of the other. This is an important part of the timing of the stroke. And also note where the hip and shoulder have equally rotated onto one side for the release of one hand. As you are catching on one hand, as you're entering on one hand, take note where the opposite leg is, the opposite toe. 